Hey everyone, welcome back to another Patty's Lab video. This is part 2 of the peristaltic pump build and I will leave a link to part 1 of the build in the information card in the top right corner. This pump is part of a really cool liquor mixing machine and that's why the pump is so compact and in particular based on an IKEA drill. I will release the schematics and code of this machine when we hit a thousand subscribers. So it would be really awesome if you could smash that subscribe button to join me on this journey. Let's get started. This video will contain three parts. The first part will be the slicer talk. And in that part I will show you the key features that you need to set in your slicer in order to make the print to a successful one. In the second part I will show you how to complete the motor and pump assembly and what IKEA drill is used for the build. And furthermore why an IKEA drill is used and not something else, for example NEMA 17 gear reducted stepper motor. And in the third part I will show you how to speed control the pump and things like how much water can the pump move, how hot does the motor get and how much current does the motor draw. Let's jump to the slicer. So the motor add-on has four 3D printed parts. So you have this main housing right here, you have these two couplings right here and you have this gear to shaft coupling. And all parts should be printed in 100% infill and our few Crucial settings should be applied for this motor housing and also for the gear to shaft. To begin, you can use per model settings, which is this button right here in Cura. And what you can do is you can apply certain features that deviate from your uh, normal slicer settings. And you can apply that to one part in a build plate filled full of parts. So you click the housing, then you can enable support for only that part because you don't want supports in the rest of the uh, of the parts on the build plate and you should enable the horizontal expansion feature and what this does is it offsets the wall inwards or outwards and therefore you can get the bearing fit because there needs to be a bearing inserted in this opening right here and the housing of the planetary gear from the drill needs to go in this larger opening and if the fit isn't correct then you can apply a negative value for the horizontal expansion and therefore the paths will be set inwards a little bit and this opening will become larger. And therefore you can fine tune your part. So you can push your part through the build plate and only let it print the bottom, bottom portion of this part. And therefore you don't waste a lot of material and you can uh, test fit your part and see if it uh, works the correct way. That's for the motor housing. Then you have this gear to shaft coupling. Don't apply the uh, horizontal expansion function to this as well. Just use a regular scaling, but only in X and Y if it doesn't fit correctly. If it's too snug, just make it a little bit larger. And therefore, these uh, pins will basically engage with the gear and you will see that in the assembly. In the preset slicer, these settings or these features are so small that sometimes the minimum feature width is set to 0 0.45. And what that does is basically omit these uh, features from being sliced altogether. And therefore you need to set your minimum feature width to 0 0.4 in the Prusa slicer. Okay, so I opened up the Prusa slicer real quick to show you where you can find these settings. So you go to print settings and then to advanced. And then you see that these uh, settings are basically larger than my 0 0.42 millimeter that I drawn into CAD. So you need to set those to 0 0.4 and then that part that I just show you will slice correctly. The remaining two parts, these two couplings, should be fine as it is and they just um, can be printed with your standard settings. Make sure you have your fan cranked up all the way because there is some overhangs, bridging, ports and, and so forth. I also have added a very um, well applied feature in uh, laser cutting and that is basically creating cutouts in the corners and what this allows for is material in the corners will always creep up a little bit so they will always make a tight uh, a tight curve right here and that's not exactly 90 degrees so we're going to insert an m3 nut in here and if you apply such features like these uh, cutouts then you make sure that the corners will not influence the fit 
and therefore you only have four straight walls that will uh, interface with your M3 nut in this case. So this is a small trick uh, for you. Now let's go to the assembly and I will show you all the steps of how to assemble this completed motor assembly and connect it to the pump. So this is part two, the assembly and this is all there's left from the drill and I will show you on screen which drill you need to buy and also include a list of additional hardware you need in the description in order to make this project complete and it will not include the hardware from the pump because that is already discovered in part one so the reason why you would use a cordless IKEA drill for a peristaltic pump has three reasons and that's one it is battery powered so you can take the pump wherever you want to go two it has a speed controller which if you're not an electronics hero you can still use this design and then use the trigger from the drill itself for the speed control and three it has a planetary gear assembly that can be easily extracted from the drill itself and then added to your own application. This is the main housing of the pump and I just added four countersunk M3 screws in these four holes and I also applied four washers and four nuts and tightened everything together. And then I added two washers and an additional nut for a later assembly to connect the add-on to the pump itself. So this is the core of the pump and in part one I spoke about an optional washer here and an optional washer here but for the completed assembly I would recommend you to add both of them and then this M5 threaded rod should be shortened and the way you determine how long the rod needs to be is have a little bit of threaded rod sticking out of this completed assembly so this is actually too short then you should add another washer here and then you should hold one of these couplings against the washer and then basically you should chop off the part from the threaded rod wherever this section starts so you have this protruding three protruding tower parts and the transition of where that happens that's exactly where you want to chop off the, um, the threaded rod. So that brings on to the preparation of this coupling. And what you need to do is you need to drill this out with a 4mm drill bit and then tap an M5 hole in there, so M5 threads. And you insert a M3 nut in this slot right there. I push the core back into the main housing and we need to reapply this washer right here and then we need to screw on the pre prepared coupling like so and I will tighten this with my hands but if you can't do that I made this two slots on there so you can use a 13 millimeter spanner in order to tighten it that way doesn't need to be super tight because we're going to add a M3 times 5 millimeter set screw that will basically lock it in place and the threaded rod is much softer than the set screw and therefore you can really crank on the set screw and really dig it into the threaded rod and therefore it will never come off. I just put the uh, hose back in there and then apply the cover and then using the four screws to screw it back in place. If you disassemble the drill you will have then the motor here and then you will have outer gear you will have six thinner gears and there are three thicker gears in here so don't mix them up you have two of these reduction uh, adapters and you have a hardened ring so let's we're going to start with the uh, outer gear. What you want to do is make sure that these pins, these stickouts, are basically matching up with the indents that are created into this um, body. And if you have done everything correctly, then this top should be flush with a small recess that is in here. 
then we're actually going to move over to this pre-assembly that I already made. So what you do is you insert a M5 bolt and I will include the dimensions in the description and then you add a washer that's really important between the bearing and the plastic bearing, washer, M5 nut and then you tighten this and then what you do is you insert that assembly in here and then you press the bearing in place and then these small ribs they should connect to one of these adapter plates and this can be a little bit finicky and then you add the gears and a little bit of gear loop then you add another of these reduction plates reduction gears and then finally you can add this hardened ring on top of here and then you basically have transferred the entire planetary gear assembly from the drill housing into this self-made housing then what you can do is you can put on the motor and then depending on how these holes turned out you might need to drill them with a 2 millimeter drill bit and then you screw this back into place with four screws I have just added two screws for demonstrative purposes but you should add all four of them and then this is basically what, it's look, what it looks like right now and then these four holes need to be drilled out with the 3 millimeter drill bit in order to fit on our pump assembly so this is now what the assembly looks like and we need to add another washer and then we need to add a coupling which of course has the same treatment as the one on the pump so you need to drill and tap and insert the M3 nut you screw this on here and this can be quite finicky and I wish I would have designed this differently but what you can do is print a third one and then stretch it and then use it as a, uh, as a wrench, as a key and then you can tighten this but the motor will spin but there is oh, plenty of friction but that's why the set screw is there because the set screw will basically hold it firmly to the axle so this set screw idea is really what makes the pump uh, very versatile so you can go back and forward without the uh, nuts undoing themselves so just really crank this so now we have this assembly completed so if we power the motor up this thing will spin and basically drive nothing so now it's time to connect both of these and now everything will make sense so you can add the parts together now and that's also why the M3 rings are there in order to give uh, this right amount of space and as you can see these should match up and interlock with themselves therefore it's not very crucial of how the spacing is because they will work over a variety of range and then as you can see they match up together and if you think that the fit is too tight you can just add a little bit more M3 washers and therefore the spacing will become larger and larger and this will also if the pump and the motor assembly are not completely straight this will also prevent from um, binding and stuff like that so now what you can do is just add four washers and four uh, nuts around here and I will just for demonstrative purposes only do the, the nuts and then this completes the entire assembly so now the pump is connected to the motor has a slightly somewhat forgiving coupling and should be able to go back and forwards and now we're going to move to part 3 and actually test the thing and also I'll show you how to drive it with uh, some electronics so here we have the test setup that I use to show you what it's like uh, to speed control the pump and what you need so this is a power supply and you can create that yourself by using a fixed power supply for example 12 volts and a buck converter this is a signal generator and with this thing I will generate a square wave with a varying duty cycle and here we have the pump 
and here we have a power n-type MOSFET. That's basically the switch that lets a small signal, which is the varying duty cycle square wave, control a heavy duty motor. So as you can see it's 7.2 volts and I will start the test at around 30% duty cycle at 25 kilohertz and as we can see the pump is turning really really slowly and if I lower the duty cycle more and more and more the pump will stall because there's simply not enough torque to let the motor spin and I can go higher and the current goes up And as we could see, the current went all the way up to 3 amps, which is quite a lot. Therefore you need quite a powerful uh, power supply in combination with a buck converter to, dri to drive this. Of course, if you don't feel confident making your own uh, speed controller and buck converter uh, system yourself, you can just use the internals of the drill. Everything should be connected and therefore you can just take the internals out and use it as it is as a speed controller with the means of the trigger and the battery as the power supply. Unfortunately I don't have time left in this video to go into the details of this circuit that I created with this test equipment so what I would recommend you is google for a PWM speed control tutorial and also a variable voltage buck converter tutorial and those tutorials will help you to get started and to move into the right direction. I will now show you the flow rate tests together with the temperature in my kitchen. So let's move to the kitchen. So I moved the entire setup to the kitchen and I will be pumping one liter of water with the duty cycle set to 35% and I will also be measuring the temperature of the motor itself and I will show you how fast it, uh, it will empty this uh, measuring cup. So this is approximately 1 minute 20 seconds for the liter of water. So I'll show you on screen how much liter per minute that is. Now we will just go to a duty cycle of 100% and just see how fast this pump can empty this one liter of water. Okay, here we go. And as we can see, we have 14.90, so 15 seconds for one liter of water and let me take it off the tripod as you can see the thing is entirely empty the motor barely did heat up so I can run it a bit more so as we can see the temperature as to be expected did increase and I have no time unfortunately to do an extensive test so what I will do is I will do a couple of tests whenever I have time and I will include the results in the description of the video so in that way you know what kind of temperatures you could expect if you do a, a certain time of uh, pumping at max speed for example so thank you for watching if you made it through the end you're awesome and remember, just try to DIY.